Anakin Skywalker, the chosen one. Anakin was much like me in my life. And while I was a kid growing up, I didn't realize it. My favorite character in Star Wars is Kenobi. And as I grow older, it becomes, I get pushed more towards ah Ahsoka. But growing up, it was Anakin. And the way Anakin's story and his upbringing and his lore has been casted and has been created makes his story arc resonate with audiences, uh, but allowed him to be a lot of people's most favorite character in Star Wars. And he's the most pivotal character in Star Wars. You know, he grew up impoverished, a slave to a single mother, sort of a Christ figure because, you know, there's debate whether he was created out of the living force itself. With that being said, I resonated with that because I grew up for all intents and purposes with a single mother for a little bit in my life. But not only that, Anakin, through his soul ties to his mother, it carried on to his crush and later on his marriage to Padme. He wanted to love in a world where he couldn't love being a Jedi because he was supposed to have an undying, compassionate love for all things, uh, good and bad, and, and show an utmost wisdom and understanding for those things. Kind of hard to do that when no one is emulating that in your life. You grow up to be you know, a 10 year old boy, nine year old boy, and you go into this intense training, your mentors who are peacekeepers end up being generals and warriors. I like that Qui-Gon was the one to discover Anakin, but in discovering Anakin, he validated Anakin's gifts. Anakin already knew he possessed special gifts but didn't know what they were or how to use it. Qui-Gon and Anakin partnered together to break him out of the chains of slavery. Through the pod racing bet, Anakin was confident in the abilities that he knew he already had and he was confident that he could win the race even though he had never finished the pod race. And Qui-Gon used his ultimate wisdom and love for the living force to use Watto's greed against him because he knew that he would overbet based off of his greed and his ego. Another thing that I like about Anakin's story is Anakin always felt weak because he could not change circumstances of the ones that he loved in his life. He was the chosen one. He had all this power. He felt the force like no other Jedi did before him. However, he couldn't keep his mom from getting kidnapped by Tusken Raiders and murdered. It enraged him. When he started getting visions of his wife passing away in childbirth, he had already gone through an insurmountable amount of pain and he didn't want to see her suffer and, and suffer that same fate. The Jedi Order gets called into question in these moments because here is your chosen one, a Jedi who's able to not only possess a Metacoin count that's higher than the Grand Master at the time, but also able to see premonitions, which hasn't been like a thing in the Galactic Empire for 
hundreds, if not thousands of years. And he doesn't know how to cope with it because he's using the Jedi Order and the Jedi Code as a blueprint of his life, but has no way to really, to really protect his family and cope with his feelings. Kenobi, to me, is the answer to this, the most complete Jedi, because he will put the order and its teachings above all else. You see this with Mace and Count Dooku's relationship. To be the ultimate Jedi sometimes is to be inhuman, to be altruistic, to be monk-like. And Jedi's like Qui-Gon Jinn, Count Dooku when he was still in order. Ahsoka understood that this wasn't necessarily the way. This wasn't the way that you could protect people and provide peace and stability in a galaxy that was going through much of what we see in the real world. I always joke and say that 2020 really did feel like the end of the Galactic Republic in a lot of ways because you're watching your democracy break down in front of you and you really wonder like are we on the good side are we on the right side of this thing you know like when like what Padme says you know this is how democracy dies with thunderous applause um Anakin's whole story arc and who he is illustrates that in a profound way how are we supposed to be these idealistic people and practice self-discipline and hold ourselves to this high regard but turn our backs on humanity it's one of the things that I think George Lucas did a brilliant job in when he was creating this universe and this story and it shows you why the other Jedi or the way they are. Why Ahsoka doesn't come back to the Order when she gets invited because they're so quick to cast her out because they're result driven. Where it was Barris who was the one that turned, you know, into a terrorist and betrayed her Order and her Republic. And it shows that she's learned that if you do not make these hard decisions in being a human, then you can turn into the monster that lives within us, that lives within us, within us all. Uh, we all have a dark side. We all have a light side. I think it was profound to see it in the last episode of Clone Wars before they brought the seventh season out back in season six when you saw Master Yoda have the visions of the end of the Clone Wars but to get those visions he had to defeat the dark side of himself that he already thought he had confronted later on you see that same struggle when he trains Luke sending them to the cave in Vegabah he must fight the dark version of himself. I think if Kenobi was honest with his relationship with Duchess Satine, would have saved Anakin a lot of struggling because he would have understood that his master had gone through that before him. Whereas Qui-Gon with Hall, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name from the Expanded Universe books. I think he would have gotten into that with with Anakin but you know Kenobi being the true Jedi that he is could watch Justice Team get killed right in front of him and still stuck to the mandate still you know rose up and, and, and 
was you know the great jazz master that he, that he was uh, it's just it's just with Anakin you feel for him because there's a lot of chances for the mentors to rally behind him and really protect one of their own and instead they saw him as a tool but also as a young Jedi Knight and didn't provide the right care for him uh, and that ultimately allowed for him to become that guy Darth Vader and become one of the most powerful Dark World Force users that the galaxy had seen in over a thousand years. This is Rick. Star Wars forever.